Hello there ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? It's Alexander Hilly 123 here and it's time for a new video. And as you can see from the title, it is time for yet another band's album video ranked worst to best today. There were words, they might not have come out in the right order, but that's what it bloody is. We're ranking different music artists and bands, starting with the worst album they've ever made and then going on to the best at the Ooh, pardon me, at the end of the video. I've done this with some of my favourite bands of all time and today is absolutely no different. I think this is the fourth or fifth, maybe fifth I've done so far and I've got Black Sabbath to come but the Ozzy Osbourne era specifically. I've got Radiohead, Elliot Smith, Nine Inch Nails, Red House Painters, a lot of other 90s kind of stuff like that. It's my favourite era of course. That is to come so stick around if you're a fan of any of those music artists and bands. So yeah, Alice in Chains started in 1987, inspired by Guns N' Roses, because initially they were called Alice N Chains, because Lane Staley's first band called Alice N Chains, so they thought, okay, what was called the band Alice in Chains, and I'm glad they did, and Lane Staley was the lead vocalist, and I think uh, Mike Starr was the initial bassist, and then Mike Inez in 1993 replaced him. William Duval then replaced Lane Staley in 2006 as lead vocalist and yeah the band have made eight albums all together properly six LPs two EPs we are going to talk about the EPs here because quite simply this band have made one of the best EPs of all time and it needs to be spoken about it's well known but I couldn't have made this video without talking about these EPs you know when I did the Catatonia one my favorite band ever you know I I didn't talk about the EPs and I probably won't talk about many other EPs and the reason is that a lot of artists and bands kind of treat it as throwaway and don't put as much effort into them to be perfectly honest with you and us as consumers and music fans you kind of think like it's not going to be on the same level as a proper LP but this particular EP that I'm going to be talking about later in the video was anything but it's one of the best of all time where it came from so left the field who knows but it's an amazing amazing album to be sure but ladies and gentlemen there has to be a worst Alice in Chains album they're all at the very least good there are no bad ones per se but we'll start with their eighth album and my least favorite it is Rainy Fog released in 2018 and this is the third album in a row with William Duval released August 2018 running in at 53 minutes in length and it's got the kind of muddy production that has plagued their albums for me in the last, well, three consecutive albums, Black Me To Wear To Blue, They'll Put Dinosaurs Here, and Rainy of Fog. And there are some good tracks here that I very much like, but there's also tracks here where, and I feel like this is increasingly becoming a problem now with Jerry Cantrell, it's like chorus, verse, chorus, chorus, verse, chorus, repeat, repeat, repeat. And the second half of these tracks, I'm looking at the track listings, do it in a second and it's like why are these songs so long like a lot of these songs are over five minutes coming up close to six and for me personally i don't feel like they need to be going on that long and i'm looking at the reviews here and they're quite positive and don't get me wrong i don't dislike any of alice in chains album but i'm here to rank the albums people might have a different order some people might be putting dirt as the least favorite album but it is what it is i just hope that and the reason I do these videos is to connect with people who like the same kind of music and the same kinds of things that I do. And I always get a few dislikes on each video, which is weird because I watched a guy do a Catatonia one and he ranked my favourite album the second worst and they've made 10 albums. And I didn't give it a thumbs down because he loves the band and I don't doubt that he cares about the band like I do, which has got different tastes and that's absolutely fine. But uh, yeah, Rainy of Fog, 10 tracks all together. 53 minutes in length I was having a look before the devil put dinosaurs here is 67 minutes in length but Rainier Fog doesn't really feel any shorter to me and I think that's because I don't know it, it still feels like it's kind of outstaying it's welcome by the end you know songs like the one you know never fade I can't get into some of the other tracks off so far under drawn red giant absolutely fantastic some of the heavier tracks on this album are some of my favorites uh, red giant is the one i'm picking as my favorite but as well with this album i don't feel like there's any goosebump inducing gorgeous moments and melancholy moments like you would get with the lane staley era 
and stuff that's on Jar of Flies, which is absolutely legendary. I don't feel like that is uh, on this album. Uh, hasn't There hasn't been a track in the last two albums which have given me goosebumps. There's a, one or two that's on Black Gives Way to Blue, which we'll talk about, of course, that actually do. But that is quite disappointing because it's always been that diverse nature of the band, like alternative metal, heavy as shit, and then absolutely gorgeous, beautiful instrumentation, very melodic, very sad, very poignant, etc, etc. And with this album, it's not as heavy as their older stuff, but at the same time, it's not hitting the, um, like, something like Down in a Hole, which is just absolutely an amazing piece of music, very, very melancholy, to say the least. Also, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to mention in the drop-down box, timestamp to when I start talking about each individual album and also my favourite track from each album my favourite track from this album Red Giant but let us move on to the next album now it is The Devil Put Dinosaurs Here the second William Deval album released May 2013 my seventh favourite and to be honest with you I feel like I prefer this one to Rainier Fog because I feel quite simply that it's more consistent production wise though it's similar again at times struggling to understand the vocals and what Jerry is especially saying. Now, his vocals have gotten worse. It's just natural. The guy's 55 now, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, his vocals have gone a little bit worse as time's gone on. And I feel like it's kind of sad that William Duvall hasn't ever been off, let off the leash properly. He sings lead vocals on a few tracks, but he doesn't sing on most of the tracks like Lane Staley used to do. And ultimately, I like William Duvall. He used to have his own band, I can't remember the name of them, but they made some good music. I remember listening to them on Spotify about 10, 12 years ago or so, and I've listened to them since then, but I'm 32 now, I'm acting like I'm 82, but the brain's just gone, I can't remember the name of the band. Comes with a fall, there you go. It does come back eventually. But yeah, he's not as good as a vocalist as Lance Daly, but he still deserves more in terms of lead vocalist, in my opinion. He's at times playing second fiddle to Jerry. It's quite strange. But yeah, the highs of this album are better than the highs of Rainier Fog, in my opinion. Songs like Hollow, Stone, what a fantastic riff. Phantom Limb, the longest song on this album. It's quite dark and sinister as well. Uh, low Ceiling, Scalpel, I quite like. Hung on a Hook, that is one where Deval is on lead vocals, and that's quite sinister and dark as well. Without being heavy, and then there's a few tracks like Lab Monkey and Chalk. Another few tracks here that I can't get into as much. Sometimes these days as I get older though, I realise that there are certain pieces of music that I look at the track list and I'm like, I love that one, like that one, like that one. And then there's always a few that's like, what does that sound like? I can't remember that track. And sometimes I can go back, I can only speak for myself, I don't know if any of you guys are like this, but I go back and it's like, yeah, I remember that now. Or maybe I don't. And also, as I get older, if I don't know an artist already and I'm trying to get into a band, maybe they've been recommended, maybe they've got really good reviews, listen to it a few times, and if there are certain tracks that I'm not enjoying, then I won't go back. But with a band like Alice in Chains or a band or artist who have proven their worth to me in the past with the music, quite simply, I will give it a few more listens because they have earned my respect and they've changed my life, made it better, blah, 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 with the great music, and thus I'll try a few more times to really understand what is going on with the music. So next, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to gloss over this EP a little bit, but I'm putting the Sap EP next. Five tracks, one of them's a joke track, not even worth talking about. And then there's four tracks, very, very uh, melancholy, all very same in terms of the theme. Brother, Got Me Wrong, Right Turn, Am I Inside. Guest vocalists, Anne Wilson on Brother and Am I Inside. Chris Cornell and Mark Arm of Soundgarden and Mud Honey, I think, respectively, on Right Turn. That is a great song. The outro is absolutely fantastic. All these different vocalists. It's just goosebump inducing. And that's what this band have always been capable of. Brother, very, very poignant lyrics. Um, and yeah, just the, the, the photos yellowing and green with mould under the bed all that stuff uh, very nostalgic as well for me and yeah just so damn good and then am i inside possibly the darkest and most melancholy track on the album and kind of stark and burr and and wilson does a great job with it so does lane his vocals here are so damn good and yeah sap it's not one of the ultimate best things they did because it's just an ep but i like all these songs and they're good 
but there's a better EP to come. But next, ladies and gentlemen, it is Facelift, the debut album released in August 1990. And for me, this is a great album. I love it. So you might be asking, why is it all in number five, essentially? Because the end of the album, I think it kind of loses its momentum. And this album is very much two albums in one for me. I spoke about before Alice N. Chains and the glam uh, kind of inspiration and Guns N' Roses and all that shit. Well, I feel that if the band had stayed as Alice N. Chains and had that more Guns N' Roses glam vibe and maybe Motley Crue and bands like that who I'm not so keen on, I wouldn't have been as big of a fan and I don't think the band were as good at that as opposed to the more darker side, whether it be heavy or melancholy, which we'd come to see on Dirt, Tripod, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, We Die Young, Man in the Box, See a Sorrow, Bleed the Freak. And then, I can't remember, that's okay. Love, Hate, Love, amazing song, of course. It Ain't Like That, Love That Main Riff. Sunshine, that's an, a lighter song. Is that about Lane's dog or his cat? I think so. But then, Put You Down, Confusion, I Know Something About You, and Real Thing. Those last four songs, for me, I'm not as keen on. The very glam and ultimately you look at the track list in here and it's it's like let's put all those songs at the bottom but all those riff heavy alternative metal songs we die young what a way to start your career that churning heavy guitar those lyrics about people dying before they're adults whether it's due to drugs or just growing up too old uh, too young and all that shit absolutely amazing man in the box legendary track we all know of course bleed the freak brilliant and i guess that's about being an outcast and an outsider and how they felt within the band perhaps something along those lines but yeah i just feel like that glam ending and it's just it's totally different lyrically and musically to what is at the front of the album and in the middle of the album if the end of this album was as strong as the start and the middle it'd be a contender for the best album but for me facelift is a great album but it just gets let down at the end by the guns and roses style kind of uh, rock instead no offense to anybody i'm just not into that as much but now ladies and gentlemen it is time for album number four and it's the only william deval album better than elaine staley album don't get triggered it's black gives away to blue released in 2009 the first william deval album and I've got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I actually got into Alice in Chains in 2008 when I was 18 years of age. And I'd been into the band about six months. I heard they'd gotten back together with a new vocalist. That's how I started listening to Comes With The Fog, William Duvall. And I was hyped. And I think the two first singles were A Looking In View and Check My Brain. Two guitar heavy tracks, pretty grungy, typically and one is very short one's very long different ends of the spectrum in terms of the length and i absolutely love that you've got a really easy to get into track you've got a track that's quite progressive and not just chorus verse chorus in looking in view and i remember loving both and to be honest i still love both looking in view fantastic chorus william deval is amazing here and then check my brain lyrically quite light but the main guitar riff sounds like a chainsaw. I was like, who's doing the bloody edges there? Goodness me. Turn that chainsaw off because it is a chainsaw riff, ladies and gentlemen. It's unbelievable. And lyrically, like I say, it's about Jerry Cantrell living in California and finding out that he doesn't hate it when he expected himself to. Will someone check his brain? And ultimately, it's probably just because he's gotten older and realises that he can withstand living... You know, in that area where apparently there's a lot of arseholes. No offence to people from that place, but uh, it's mainly celebrities, obviously. It's probably what he's talking about. But yeah, when he was in his 20s on heroin, no doubt he wouldn't have been able to enjoy that kind of location. But he's gotten older, he's gotten more mature, and life changes, and now he kind of digs it. So there you go. But uh, yeah, where was that with this album? What was I talking about? All Secrets Known, Check My Brain, Last of My Kind, 
really, really heavy banger. Last of My Kind and Acid Bubble, two of the heaviest Alice in Chain songs ever. I love Last of My Kind. Duval, yet again, another fantastic performance here. I don't think he's been allowed to do this enough on the last two albums for me personally. One of the reasons why I prefer Black Is Worse Blue. Uh, and lyrically, I've got AZ Lyrics up here. It's a website for lyrics. Let's just have a look at Last of My Kind because I want to talk about this. My internet's not working properly. Even yeah, even opening up new tabs. My internet at the moment there's an issue with it. <laughs> I will be onto my ISP. Don't you worry about it. But uh, yeah, where is it? Blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm trapped in the cold outside. There ain't no shelter, and they wanna force my hand. And then he just gets really aggressive until I take what I wanted. Until I br wait, 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 wait a minute. Until I take what I wanted and break all the lies and defeat the fucking liars. I thought there was a lyric in there. Smash all the temples and crawl through the rubble and cry to the fallen. Take what I wanted and break all the lies and defeat the fallen. Alright, so it's repeated. But it's really aggressive and just like, yeah. It's so damn good. Uh, but the two melancholy tracks of the album. Main melancholy track. Melancholy. I think you know what I'm talking about, let's just. Melancholy tracks, Black Gives Way to Blue, featuring Mr. Elton John on the piano. Come on. And also, Your Decision, and it was kind of with this album, seemingly like, oh, Black Gives Way to Blue, this is the Lane Staley track, this is Jerry, we all knew it was coming. First album since his death. They've come back. This is his song, and it was just like, for me personally, I like that song, Elton John, very nice, that he decided to play piano on this for Alice in Chains and Jerry Cantrell but for me personally it's all about your decision this is the poignant track there hasn't been a song like your decision in my opinion on the last two albums and Check My Brain is kind of like them bones quick alt metal song and a looking in view is kind of like I don't know but maybe Rain When I Die or something along those lines in terms of its length and its feel but if that's the case then your decision is the new maybe down in a hole. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it lyrically. It gives me goosebumps. It's very poignant and you can't help but think of the relationship between Jerry and Lane here. It happens a lot. Big fans of the band will know what I'm talking about. Even on the albums when Lane, as we'll talk about coming up in the next three albums on the list, you know, even when Lane was alive, he's still getting spoken about even though he's alive. It's kind of awkward but it's so good that they allowed themselves to be that honest with each other within the music because it's one of the main reasons this band was so damn good. And you don't obviously get that with the newer music. And needless to say, you don't get the edge of the drugs and all that as well. And ultimately, it's a good thing because whoever somebody is, you, you don't want people addicted to hard drugs. You don't want people doing what Lane did and ultimately what led to his death, you know, a speedball, a mixture of heroin and cocaine and it, it bears repeating you know that he'd gone out of the public eye and I think the last picture anybody ever saw of him was either 98 or 99 this is three or four years before his death so as horrendous as it sounds and I understand and hope you'll understand I should say where I'm coming from here but ultimately it took him too long to die and the last three or four years most probably from what I've heard on the internet wasn't worth living anyway and it's just horrifying horrible and yeah and it's good needless to say that these artists like for example a band like Depeche Mode another band that I loved their best music came when they were all on hard drugs really struggling with life and they made the best music it sometimes happens and it's not just heroin it can be hallucinogenic drugs people might not be that hard on the look they might not be succumbing to the drugs and really struggling and it's killing them they might be able to handle it at that time the music's still great and great music can be made without drugs but I'm not just being pro heroin here like an idiot or anything but it is and it has shown to be the case that drugs can enhance and make help make great music and ultimately it did with this band but it also of course ultimately led to their demise and people shouldn't make martyrs of people who've lost their lives due to drugs and it's not easy it's horrible and I guess there's always people in the middle of it, the friends and family of people who have, you know, unfortunately passed away due to drugs or people like for example I know Phil Anselmo from Pantera and Down, you know, he was addicted to heroin for a long time and now he's long clean and that's great. 
and I've for some reason just gone on a tangent about her drugs for two or three minutes but there you go we had to talk about drugs um it's just one of the things of this band and the late 80s early 90s so many musicians who we lost due to drugs all different kinds unbelievable but yeah ladies and gentlemen black gives way to blue i think it's the darkest of the three william deval albums i think overall it's the heaviest but it's still got the melancholy for me it's just the best william deval album and i really really like it coming up next ladies and gentlemen you look online and there's a lot of people defending this album and saying they don't understand why it received quite so much flack. It certainly didn't help coming after Dirt, but I've got to say, I love this album. I didn't love it in 2008 when I got into the band because 65 minutes in length, it's a long album. The production is quite muddy. T repeated on me to apologise, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah, it's it's a slow burner, but once you get into this album, oh, is it damn well good. 12 tracks all together, 65 minutes in length. Let me just get the lyrics ready of a few tracks here I specifically want to talk about. Um, that will do, oh my god, that will do, I love that song so much. And that will most certainly do. So, Tripod, the one with the three-legged dog on, self-titled, Alice in Chains. This album, for me, is the darkest. It's quite sludgy, and the Wikipedia page talks about this as well. It's quite sludgy and doomy, but quite a lot of these tracks that are sludgy and doomy end up being like six, seven minutes long, such as Nothing Song and Head Creeps. Head Creeps is just a weird song. There's a weird vibe with this album. It's downright, it's disturbing, but in a different kind of way. And again, it kind of, the song again, I mean, it talks of somebody kind of maybe manipulating somebody and holding them to ransom perhaps in an even sexual way here when you look at the lyrics you'll understand what i mean uh, you violate a part of me again i know i made the same mistake i won't do it again why why you slap me in the face oh i didn't say it was okay no 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 and the way that lyric uh, lane delivers those lyrics are just fucking unbelievable and i mean by this point the drugs had started to take a hold. I think this was the year that he did the album with, oh, what they called? It was a one-off album with some members of Pearl Jam. Um, I love the album. I don't know why I can't. Mad season, there you go. Christ almighty. Now I'm getting older, it takes me a few seconds. Bear with me, bear with me. But yeah, gorgeous album. And his vocals then, you could tell the drugs were playing a part. They were weakening him and his vocals but they were still really good and it only helps to enhance this album. I feel like listening to this album as soon as I've done. Not listened to any Alice in Chains in quite a few months and uh, <laughs> one who know. But uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Heaven Beside You. This is such a great acoustic track, but it's got a really easy to listen to edge, but it's dark as well. Lyrically, not the most amazing track you'll ever hear. But I love that chorus, so there's problems in your life, that's fucked up, but you're not blind. You're just see-through faded, overrated, and out of your mind. And there's a slightly different version. I'm not blind, I'm just see-through faded, super jaded, out of my mind. <laughs> so damn good. But yeah, So Close and Brush Away are two shorter tracks here but i absolutely love those two tracks and sometimes i find myself to returning to them more so than some of the more well-known alice in chains tracks and the longer tracks and frogs is an eight minute and 18 seconds really really peculiar slow burner and Lane Staley just kind of lamenting why his life is the way it is, kind of. It's just phenomenal. My favourite track from this album, and I did forget to link, or at least talk about my favourite track from each album. You can find it in the drop down menu along with the timestamp, of course, of each video. But, apologise, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not redoing the video now. Over now. We've got to talk about this song, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to quickly talk about it. <sighs> You know, it's quite morose and sinister, dark, depressing to talk about. But we've all thought about uh, funeral songs, haven't we? For me, From the Morning, Nick Drake. If you never listened to it, you need to. Uh, obviously, Debussy, Claude de Lune. 
the song's so good, it could be at a funeral or a wedding. It's the best piece of music ever made, in my opinion. But the third is over now. Now, whether the powers that be in the church would allow a guy who had a, a speedball heroin cocaine overdose to be singing to me as I get lowered into the ground, I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, this song, it's called Over Now. It's about the death of the band. It's about the death of anything good. It's But it's got this kind of feel of acceptance, like everybody knows that it's over now. They're not fighting it. They've made their peace with it. And that's what I love about this track. It's it's kind of peaceful within the darkness and the sadness and all that other kind of shit. Lyrically, musically, it's fucking phenomenal. I think it might be my favourite Alice in Chains song, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's been on my mind. Could you stand right there, look me straight in the eye and say that it's over now? And yet again, I think this is um, Jerry singing to Lane more brutal honesty. We pay our debt sometime. And then the outro, that elongated guitar, that fucking unbelievable. Goosebump City, yet again, unbelievable. Tripod, underrated in my opinion. The third best album. I absolutely love it. It just might take you, if you're a new fan, a little bit of time to get into, but there are some great moments there. Behind the cover. That's a Stone Temple Pilots album, ladies and gentlemen. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, in at number two, it's an EP, but we've got to talk about it. It is Jar of Flies, released in between Dirt and the self-titled Alice in Chains tripod album. 30 minutes in length, released January 1994. And where did this come from? So many EPs are just brush away and think, eh, it's going to be okay, but not that good. This album was freaking unbelievable. And apparently here, uh, nominated for two Grammy Awards, Best Recording Package. What does that mean? It's, oh, it means the visual look of an album. Beautiful album. You'll obviously, if you're an Alice in Chains fan, have seen it before. And Best Heard Rock Performance for I Stay Away, even though it's not heard rock, but... There you go, that's the Grammys for you. Freaking morons. But yeah, seven tracks, 30 minutes in length. You know, I was talking about Nick Drake before. Uh, Pink Moon, 30 minutes in length. One of the most concise, gorgeous, beautiful, melancholy folk albums ever. Kind of like Elliot Smith's shit as well in the 90s. He was a freaking genius. Another man who we lost to hard drugs, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and this album, I put alongside those. And... Both Jar and Flies and Dirt, which you know is number one by now, I put alongside the Beatles, yeah, uh, Radiohead, OK Computer, Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd, Aphex Twin, 8592, uh, Metallica, Master of Puppets, you know, these classic legendary albums were start to finish, it's amazing, but not only that, you've got to listen to the whole thing. And for me, Jar of Flies and Dirt, are at that top pinnacle of music within the history of music they're that good and it, you know people shit on the grunge era mainly i think a lot of the times due to the tag of grunge and alice in chains were acoustic they were folk they were metal they were hard rock you know it's they were just a great band and bands like soundgarden stone temple pilots smashing pumpkins pearl jam even though eddie vedder's a fucking ass all these days made some of my favourite music of all time and they all helped each other and they all seemed to have a camaraderie with each other I'm sure there were rivalry and people that didn't like each other as well but for me it's just one of my favourite eras of music history and I only wish I could have enjoyed it but Rotten Apple, Nutshell, I Stay Away No Excuses, Whale and Wasp I've always loved the name of that little instrumental Don't Follow and Swing On This I mean people talk about Swing On This being the worst song on the album Ultimately, I think it might be, but you know what? It's still freaking amazing, ladies and gentlemen. But No Excuses is about the bond between Jerry and Lane. It's not about drugs here. It's about that camaraderie and that bromance and that relationship. And it gives me goosebumps because a song like that, you'd think it'd be cheesy and whatnot. Anything but. It's so heartfelt. It's absolutely beautiful. It really is. Nutshell. Well, the first minute of that track, there's no vocal. There's this simple acoustic guitar plays. And lyrically, it's probably, possibly, the most poignant, darkest thing they ever put to tape. And one of their darkest songs that's ever been put to tape by anybody, I think. Sometimes I just like to listen to that first minute and then skip the song just to listen to that first minute. How can a guitar intro so simple be so poignant and so good 
Well, it's amazing in itself, but ultimately, I would say it's because you know how good it is what comes after that. And sometimes I just want that hit of that minute of nutshell. It's amazing. Jerrifly is one of the best EPs ever. It's so concise due to its length, but also concise due to its feel. You know, swing on this is a little bit different, a little bit jazzy, if you will. But yeah, I stay away as well. His vocal and that song is so damn good. I want to see how long has this video been going now because I don't want to go that long. 30 minutes, that'll do. Okay. And in at number one, ladies and gentlemen, you might have known that it was coming. Sometimes when I do these lists, I will shock you. It won't necessarily be the album you're expecting, but this time, it's the album you were expecting. It is the masterpiece that is dirt. And like I said before, an album that deserves to be up there, the very best and the very pinnacle of music history. Released September 1992, 58 minutes in length, all together, 13 tracks on the album. For me, the heaviest, for me, the darkest and most goosebump inducing, the most honest lyrically, the harmonies at the best, Lane's vocals, a little bit more powerful than Facelift, because he's older, but the drugs haven't taken a hold yet. He's just at his best. Everyone is at their goddamn best. And it's all about the drugs, this one. It's all about the hardship. There's no letting up. But whereas Tripod and, you know, the Alice in Chains album after this, 1995, is the darkest, and now I'm saying this is the darkest, it's a different kind of darkness. It's a different kind of feel. I would say that the Tripod album is a little bit more left of feel. There's more risks taken within the sound. You know, like I said, Frogs and a few more acoustic songs and like Head Creeps and Nothing Song. You've heard these songs before. You'll know what I'm talking about. They're very, very strange. Whereas this isn't as strange. It's a bit more punchy and to the point, but it's still very dark because of the lyrical uh, aspect of the album. You know, Them Bones. We're all gonna die, rain when I die, sick man, junk, head, hate to feel, angry chair. It's just absolutely phenomenal and quite insistent on you listening to uh, these very, very poignant dark songs. And it's so cool because like I said before, with these kind of lyrics, it could easily be construed as being cheesy or being a try hard, but these people, you know, they were making money, but the drugs were killing them at the time, and it's that honesty within the lyrics and the music that made it so damn good. Also, ladies and gentlemen, this is totally random and left of field, but I just noticed on AZ lyrics, a little bitter, died, fear the voices, get born again, killer is me, lying season, what the hell have I, seven B-sides for you to sink your teeth into if you've never listened to any of those songs. They're all amazing. The band's B-sides were even amazing. My personal favourite is what the hell have I have I sorry which features a sitar and I just feel like it doesn't fit dirt but it's so good and Lion season that chorus that ending those harmonies Jerry and Lane it's Goosebump City again ladies and gentlemen take me down to Goosebump City then Bones best alternative metal song ever I remember hearing it for the first time when I was running people over on GTA San Andreas when I was 14 years old Radio X man Helmet as well what a sick band Helmet, Depeche Mode, Stone Temple Pilots, Alice in Chains, Stone Roses, Rage Against the Machine. Like, oh my lord, the old GTA games are great for the gameplay and the stories and whatnot, and every aspect of them. But uh, the music was so good as well, and I used to alternate between Radio Los Santos and the hip hop, like Gangstar and Dr. Dre, and Snoop Dogg, and everything, and then go to the old hard rock metal stuff as well. So good. But, ladies and gentlemen, Damn that river, rain when I die, down in a hole. What what can you say? I mean, I just love it. It's so genuinely fantastic and emotional. And by now, you know, I've been making this video 35 minutes. I've not done any jump cuts because I don't believe in jump cuts, ladies and gentlemen. You're seeing it in one take. It's not easy to do. But I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it bears repeating for this masterpiece of an album. But let's just go in depth a little bit more with two songs here, both Down and a Hole and Hate to Feel. Pardon me. Bury me softly in this womb, I give this part of me for you. Sun rains down and here I sit, holding rare flowers in a tomb in bloom. Now I had a look on AZ lyrics and honestly, have a look at how many Alice in Chains songs 
have rhyming. Like, here, uh, in a tomb, in bloom. They do that a heck of a lot, and I never noticed it. When you look at it, it's really strange, because you think, even here on hate to feel, Plastic man, paper face, candy heart, what a waste. Gotta change, set a date, eat my cake, lick my plate. <laughs> so yet again, Jerry Cantrell's rhyming in the house, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, it's not cheesy, even though you think it'd be. And then when I listen to the songs, I don't necessarily even let it dawn on me that he's rhyming. But he certainly is, or Lane, of course. But uh, yeah, so interesting. Stir at me with empty eyes and point your words at me. Mirror on the wall will show you what you're scared to see. I can see, wish I couldn't see at all. I can feel, wish I couldn't feel at all. Hate to see, wish I couldn't see at all. Hate to feel, wish I couldn't feel at all. Holy shit! I think Richard Pryor and bloody old Gene Wilder are going to come out here soon. That's a uh, see no he evil, hear no evil, ladies and gentlemen. A fantastic, hilarious, one of the best comedies ever made. You've never seen it, but I can't help but think of that film with <laughs> good those lyrics. Even though I shouldn't be laughing because it's very dark. But yeah, Alice in Chains, there we go ladies and gentlemen. Worst to best, all done. I want to ca call it quits now, 36 minutes in length. I've already told you, Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne era, Red Edge Painters, Elliot Smith, two of the best songwriters of the 90s, best of all time, Mark uh, Kozilek and Elliot Smith. Radiohead? Want to do Radiohead? Come on, Nine Inch Nails. Where do I go from here? There are certain bands that I won't touch, for example like Pearl Jam because I just find the newer stuff crap and I don't want to listen to it. I respect Pearl Jam so much obviously but there are certain artists who make music and you love the older stuff but it's just like I feel like they shouldn't be making music anymore because the standards have just dropped so significantly and that's the way I personally feel about a band like Pearl Jam. Do I love the 90s stuff? Even the stuff after the grunge era, like Yield and Binaural, very underrated album. Yes, I love those albums, but the last two or three Pearl Jam albums have just been awful. And, you know, on the Pearl Jam Facebook page now, it's just Eddie Vedder going on about the global warming and politics. Um, and people would say, well, Pearl Jam have always been very political, but it wasn't as in your face and it wasn't as obvious and quite simply when you have to see someone else's way of life and the how do I say this the thoughts on the world every day and you don't agree with it then you either get engaged in an argument online with people or you turn a blind eye or I don't know but it just doesn't sit right with me you know I think that's a topic for a whole new video anyway ladies and gentlemen another 40 minutes in length now we're done. I'll see you guys uh, very soon, actually, because I might have a gaming pickups video. I've got a Sonic Mania Let's Play, and then the channel is probably going to be on a temporary hiatus until early next year, when I will tell you guys what plans we've got for 2022. But thank you for watching. Keep listening to the great music, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.